everybody to our next Q&A session with Dr. Françoise Wilhelmi de Toledo. Good morning, Françoise, and thank you very much for taking the time. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, everybody. Françoise, you're heading the research department of the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics at Lake Constance, Germany and in Marbella, Spain. And you just published two interesting brand new studies together with Franziska Grundler and the medical team. And before answering the next bunch of questions we received, could you quickly let us know about the two new publications? With pleasure, because it's a, it's a big event for us. The first one is a review, a review in Annals of Medicine. Um, a review is an overview about, about a whole topic. And we focus this review on fasting, of course, and other nutritional strategies. But the real focus is on long-term fasting, because I, I realized that most of the people know the intermittent fasting, but don't know the long-term fasting, which is five days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days or more, under medical supervision and with a very special setting and always with the three dimensions, the physical one, the medical one, the community and the spiritual psychosocial dimension. And the second study um, deals with a decrease of oxidative stress and increase of antioxidant capacity of the body um, during a long-term fasting. We had a group of 109 persons fasting for 10 days. So uh, this uh, they just have been released in this second week of June 2020. So they are available for everybody. That sounds super interesting. And to my knowledge, we are anyway planning to have separate videos on every single one of them, right? Yes, because there is a lot to say uh, about uh, all of them. And for many people, reading an article, a scientific article, is not always very easy if you don't have a sort of introduction. That sounds perfect. I will anyway link the uh, studies in the description of this video. And um, once we have the new videos ready, I will also link them uh, in here. So in case you're interested to learn about the studies, then just have a look in them. Uh, so I think we can start then with the questions we received in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, there were many of them, I have to say, and uh, you can see that not all of them are related to Corona anymore. Maybe there's already a lot of information going on, uh, but there were especially some specific questions about coffee this time, about uh, nutritional strategies and uh, about behavior, behavior changes during fasting and lifestyle changes. So let's start with the first one. And I think that question we received, I don't know, like 30 times already. Uh, it's about coffee. And the, the question is, can I drink coffee while I am fasting? And what will the coffee do with my body? So as a person with a <clears throat> relatively low blood pressure, I would say coffee is a gift of God's. It's a wonderful substance, plant bay as a plant that contains a, an alkaloid a family of the xanthines called caffeine. And caffeine uh, is the biggest uh, stimulating stimulation uh, simulating agent of the central nervous system it's the most drunk beverage after water and tea in the whole world and the most consumed psychoactive legal drug so it leads also to a mild addictive effect some people say it's more a habit forming but at at least you can say that if you drink a lot of these uh, beverages, when you stop them, like you should do when you fast, then you will have withdrawal syndrome. You have also um, a tolerance effect and everybody f knows that drinks a lot of coffee when you have to, an exam to prepare or very, uh, very strong work to do. So you drink a lot. After a while, you can drink a whole coffee uh, pot and you, you don't have the effects anymore. So you have a sort of overstimulation and uh, your sensitivity to caffeine is going to decrease. What is happening when you fast is of course this withdrawal syndrome. Sometimes you even have it when you don't fast and when you wake up in the morning having drunk a lot of coffee, caffeine the f a day before and caffeine is not only in coffee, it's also in tea, it's also in chocolate, it's also in cola nut and all the cola beverages. 
and uh, the guarana and so a lot of mate for instance for the south american people um, so we are very overstimulated and saying it's a drug is not wrong um, what has the positive effects of fasting it uh, it is the stimulating effect you can concentrate better sometimes it's even a little uh, psycho stimulant you have a lot mild euphoria if you drink a good express or when you are a bit uh, uh, fasted some hours and uh, you have also a stimulation of the gastrointestinal tract uh, so that if you drink a coffee after eating then you have more gastric juices and this is going to lead uh, you to maybe better uh, digestion so with all these wonderful effects you could say of course if you fast you need this uh, stimulation and if you do a short term fast or an intermittent fast and you have to work then of course coffee is going to be needed by many people you can in my opinion i will tell you my opinion after where it doesn't seem if you don't put sugar and milk that it really interferes with the fasting uh, metabolism uh, except maybe with the sugar metabolism but of course if you take it with milk and sugar or sweetness it's still worse so <clears throat> In my opinion, it doesn't belong to fasting, but if you do the intermittent fasting only for physical reasons, then maybe you can drink it uh, one, one cup. But we have a different philosophy of fasting. We do the long-term fasting. If you do only five days, um, we see in fasting several dimensions. The first one is that you really resensitize all your receptors and also your caffeine, uh, caffeine res, uh, receptors. Uh, receptor. So this tolerance, if you do a fasting like I did after my first, my exams of medicine, I slept five days. And I had the impression that uh, this exhaustion was accumulated in my body. And in the fasting, I could really release it. And when I went back home, after a long fasting of 12 days, I drank one cup of coffee and my um, blood pressure was going up, my heart was beating, I had uh, gastric heartburn. So you really notice the effect of coffee only if you have made a break. So for me, the fasting is a moment where you do a break with all the drugs, all the habits you have. And, and this is uh, resetting really your sensitivity. The interesting thing is that of course, at the beginning of the fast, you can have a sort of drowsiness, you're, you're tired, even anxiety, even a sort of a um, not being able to focus. Uh, the blood pressure might go a little bit down because it's not stimulated uh, uh, anymore. And of course, you can have headaches. And headaches is a very specific symptom for the, for the withdrawal of alcohol, but also of caffeine. So when we make a long-term fasting in our clinics and with the whole staff that accompany you, our idea is you make a real reset and you try to understand how do I function? How does my body function and make its balance without drugs and external stimulations, but only with your own stimulation. What can you do when you are tired, when you have a headache, uh, when you uh, feel uh, uh, without energy, you know, sometimes even a bit depressed uh, because of the withdrawal, then you can do either a power nap or really a sleep. Sleep during the day, if you're really tired, you can sleep or do a power nap. Uh, this is a topic from uh, another uh, film we have done. And then the other possibility is to stimulate yourself. And the stimulation can come, for instance, with putting a lot of cold water on your face. Or if you are brave, you can go under the shower and do a sort of a, a warm, cold shower ending with cold. You can also have um, uh, therapies. You have therapies to really do energy therapies. And you go back uh, after that and you, you feel renewed in your energies. And sometimes just a good talk or looking at a film or a wonderful scenery changes just your uh, whole energy field. 
And you have also on a physical level um, during the fasting, the renewal, the regeneration of the mitochondria, which are a little power plant. So when you do a fasting, let's say five days or 10 days, then you have always the three first days which are sort of, especially for the, for the sinners, you know, for the people who have over excited their body, have overworked themselves then these people need a reset and the reset is not always uh, easy because you you fall in a sort of, uh, yeah, you, you are not uh, energetic for one, two or three days. And after this uh, begin, this transition phase, then comes the real energy of the fasting. And this is an extraordinary experience. And I said before, one of the biggest negative effects of coffee, in my opinion, is that it allows you to overwork yourself and you don't notice it. And this is yeah. why when you fast, you shouldn't be take any stimulation except maybe some sips of green tea, which already give you energy. So you should be very, very um, um, interested to see how do I react with only what I have in my own body, in my soul also, because it's not only you can also have a depression that will manifest uh, by uh, fatigue and, and of course drink a lot of water. This is very important because it keeps your blood pressure a little bit more fit and especially for the headache. It, well, we have some theories about that, but drinking a lot of water helps a lot in this little withdrawal syndrome. And finally, for us, the fasting has this spiritual psychosocial dimension and also the dimension you find in the religions and in the philosophical school, self-mastery. If you decide to renounce food, then be consequent because it's easier on the one side. No exceptions, just learn to say no for a period of time and then you can go back uh, to coffee, you can go back to some uh, little quantities of organic wine. You can go back to a lot of things that are only bad in too big quantities. So my opinion is for long-term fasting, no coffee. And try other methods. We, we have a, a secret for uh, replacing the coffee is the dry brush. You can brush your own body with a with a special uh, brush and this is stimulating a little bit like coffee of course it's not so easy uh, but um, try other ways to re renew your energy or just uh, rest because this might be also the reason why you need coffee and for intermittent fasting uh, i would suggest you stop the coffee too but sometimes it's much more easy to stop the coffee two or three days before the, the day where you really eliminate it. Um, and if you do intermittent fasting, it's not very difficult. So I would always replace it by a sort of tea, maybe mixed and always organic. Because one thing I forgot to say is that uh, if you drink uh, one or one and a half liter of coffee a day and it's not organic, you get a lot of pesticides in your body. And this is making oxidative stress. So if you drink coffee, drink much less. Be aware of the wonderful effect this has. Use it as a stimulant, as a little drug, a plant-based natural drug, which is here for, for us. Don't abuse it. And when you fast, take the opportunity to reset the sensitivity, sensitivity of your receptors of caffeine. So thank you very much for summing that question up in the end. And the next question you already touched a bit in your first answer, but uh, since I know many people are having uh, these concerns, maybe you can go a bit deeper. And the question is how to avoid feeling tired during fasting? Well, like I told you, when you do intermittent fasting, normally you shouldn't be that tired because uh, except you have a hypoglycemia, or even a withdrawal from the drugs like caffeine you are using normally. So let's talk about the fasting we do in the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics, which is more long-term fasting, uh, five days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days. And there uh, you can have, especially in the first days, 
this feeling of fatigue, of not being concentrated, of being so without the real uh, drive, you know. Um, and for that, I would say, first avoid the things that exhaust you. Sleep properly. If you sleep with, uh, with you cannot well well sleep especially in the first times of the fasting the first days of fasting sometimes we have an agitated sleep this is probably due to the metabolic switch where some adrenaline is necessary at the beginning of the fast to make this metabolic switch so <clears throat> you if you don't sleep well during the night then use uh, earplugs use a mask use a mask so that you really be in the dark. And um, avoid, for instance, things during the day like over um, exerting yourself with uh, too much exercise or do, do, um, doing very long sun ba bathing without movement uh, you, or making phone calls or having stress from your work or you, your family, your relations. Uh, avoid, and this is why uh, the prophets, when they fast, they go to the desert. So says the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, many, many um, wisdom traditions, religious tradition, they always say when you fast, try to look inside and not uh, being impressed by a thousand um, stress, stress factors from outside. So try to really make a sort of bring yourself in a protected mode, in a protected place also. And, uh, well, that was the first thing, is try not to avoid to be overworked. In the first days of fasting, like I said with the to topic of coffee, sometimes the, the tiredness comes just because you have stopped the stimulations. Coffee is a stimulant, but work is another one. Uh, your, your usual um, habits, you know, when you break the patterns of your usual habits, you might, you might have this feeling. This is why uh, in the Bochinger Wilhelmi Clinics, we always organize the day of a person fasting with rhythms and rituals. The pose at noon, where you have uh, one or two hours of, of rest, you can sleep there, you have a liver pack, you, you really interrupt the day. And then um, learn techniques like meditation, like maybe dialogues with a, with, a, with a person that listen to you or a psychologist or maybe someone who is your guide in, in the fasting and in life so you can uh, get rid of the internal stressors, you know? It's not only physical, uh, physically uh, exhaustion that uh, gives you the, the impression of having no drive, being uh, tired. Um, it's also the uh, um, psychological stress. You know, it's this constant self-talk inside. You don't even realize um, mental activity. And when it's negative, you know, you just think or you, you, you are worried about things and, or you repeat unconsciously. Uh, always reproaches or, or self-reproaches. This is exhausting. And the, another thing is when you have, a, you have a big change to do internally. For instance, you have um, stopped your profession, you are just about retiring. We have a lot of people who come just in the moment of retirement and it's an excellent moment to do a, a fasting, a bit longer fasting. Then you, you, you have to confront your anxieties. Uh, this is a big work and fatigue and absence of drive and, and concentration is also a protection. It protects an inner work. Uh, you have one prophet I love very much in, in the Bible, it's Elias. And uh, after having had a lot of trouble and he does, didn't really understand what his mission was, he falls down on the floor under a tree and he stays there long, long, long time and he doesn't want to wake up, he doesn't want to, walk, to, to, walk, to, to stand up until finally he stands up and then goes for a, for a fast of 40 days walking to a holy mountain. This type of uh, stories tell us that sometimes 
um, emotional, uh, existential uh, happenings will really need our full spiritual strength and power. And this means that we need to be protected from everything else. So the fatigue comes. So, you know, <clears throat> between the people who make the fasting just to, let's say, it's a good uh, reason now have a, to have a bet better body performance, uh, slowing down the aging processes, um, avoiding diseases or curing diseases. This is excellent to have this topic, but if you forget the other dimensions, like the community dimension, and also the psychosocial and spiritual dimension, the motivation for fasting is much less. Because what you experience in fasting, at the level of the soul and the personal consciousness increase and the, uh, the personal evolution that goes sometimes with crisis. This is why we have such a large staff. We need uh, to sometimes really take care of someone going through a very, very strong internal process, forgiveness processes or mourning, griefs, all kinds. And uh, even if we are not priests, uh, we have uh, in our staff always this dimension of listening to someone and helping a person to make this evolution. This is why when you see fasting as a really holistic, well, I don't like this word, but a sort of multidimensional um, practice, then fatigue doesn't have the same uh, meaning. It can be something you have to go through. And then when you have done the process, it can also be a physical process. People coming with diseases, they will much more need to rest. Of course, to activate yourself, do physical training. This is very important to have a good fast. But sometimes just rest, be in the solitude, not loneliness, but just choose to spend some hours on your own, maybe in meditation, in prayer, and just looking at the at nature, maybe just being on your own and letting the processes happen, uh, writing your dreams, uh, having some time a sparing partner is very, very uh, useful too. I had the same thought uh, just uh, right now because I know that a lot of patients come pretty exhausted and they arrive in the clinic and most of the times I just have the feeling the body knows the answer and if you're exhausted because you just spent years uh, just going above your limits then maybe it's just the very right time to let it go and accept that now is the time to really give the body the energy back and give the time back um, to just let let happen and uh, focus on yourself and also figuring out what you really read, uh, need right now in order to then regain the energy and being able and then also loving to work out and loving to exercise. Is that something that you observe as well? Oh yes, it's a renewal of the motivation to live just what you are mentioning. And I think it's very true for many people learning to listen to their body, to let go, like you say, but with confidence, not just let go, you know, uh, but be confident that your body is going through a phase of renewal. It's like for the mitochondria, the mitochondria are our little power plants, and they are going to go through a process of destruction and regeneration anew. So this means you can let go and even accept, I don't feel like doing anything because the energy is going to come on its own. And we observe sometimes here people who force themselves the first day of fasting, the second day, force themselves to exercise and so on. And the ones who have understood how the process of fasting is, they just say, okay, no, two or three days, I just let it go. If I don't feel to do anything, I don't do anything may be treatments because this is energizing you and sleeping and doing just a little bit of uh, exercise on the floor or something like this. And Are then one day you woke up in the morning and you say, wow, now the drive is uh, here again. It's yeah, yeah, it's renewed. 
Yeah, that was exactly what I was experienced when I came here the first time as well, uh, that I wanted to try and test everything, of course. And it took me a couple of days until I realized that is not what I'm really needing right now. And that was when I could let go and just accept that it is okay to be on the balcony and uh, looking at the beautiful lake and just do nothing. And that then that was the moment when I had the feeling now I'm really regaining the energy that I was missing for such a long time. So thank you, Francoise, very much for uh, taking the time to answer the questions. That was extremely interesting. I hope it's useful uh, for the people watching this video as well. And I'm already looking forward to our next episode. Thank you, Lisa. And bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.